Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be going over time lapses. So I'm going to show you uh, the process of what I do from taking the pictures all the way to uh, rendering the video. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, I'm just going to show you my process. Uh, it's the fastest way I've kind of found to do it and um, just the easiest. So first what we're going to do is start in Lightroom. You don't have to. Um, but I shoot raw so I have to bring it in and edit it somewhere so Lightroom is the best option for me because I can edit one photo and then just apply it to the rest and export them out. So I find that pretty easy to do as opposed to Photoshop setting up like a whole automated thing uh, to do batch edit. So what we're going to do here is just go ahead and import our photos. Uh, I'm just going to find them. Okay and then we're going to click on the folder. Actually, I have a couple in here, so I have already edited them, but I'm just going to show you what I do. So I go to my raw folder here. These are the raw files. And then once they're imported here, we're going to go over to develop. Okay, now that we have them imported, so I'm just going to start with this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter what frame. So what I like to do is just bring down the contrast usually bring down the highlights but more so the whites and then I will adjust the highlights after. Bringing the shadows up, I'm just trying to get a very flat photo going here and then I'm going to um, take down the clarity just a little bit just to make it a little bit softer and turning up the texture to keep um, the sharpness and then a little bit of dehazing. I'm gonna up the saturation here. I don't like the red so much so we're gonna keep scrolling down. So also the reason why I want to get it so flat here is so I can bring it to the curves and then I can adjust the way I like. So you don't have to follow this. Um, this is just generally how I like to end up editing the majority of my photos for that baseline edit and then just kind of moving on from there. So because there is a lot of shadows in this one, I probably will keep the shadows to a minimum. and. I might actually turn the highlights back up to see how that is. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I actually think it's, I'm gonna bring down the tint here. I think that's what's putting so much red into it. Uh, I am going to use a profile correction. My scrolling on my mouse is not working. And then usually it has my recorded uh, lens there, so it just puts that information in and fixes it. Uh, I think we missed one. All right, the hue and saturation. So I'm going to turn down that red because I don't want it so much. I guess it's actually orange. So we're actually going to just turn down the luminance on the orange a little bit. And we could even sh try shifting it a little bit. I kind of like that. It's more balanced. I like bringing out the yellows in the greens, so I do like pumping up the saturation for that, but maybe we'll just turn down the luminance on the green and bring up the yellow. And then for the blue here, I'm going to bring down the luminance a little bit. I'm going to shift the aqua a little bit and then shift the blue more towards aqua. And then bring up the saturation, actually that might be a little too much. so. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna leave it where it is. I'm happy with that. So this, um, as you'll see in the next, once we import it, I've already edited this. It's gonna look a little different in this edit. It is definitely more of a flat image and more um, shifted towards yellow greens and uh, teal here but it's just whatever colors you like. This I like, but I also like the other one. But anyway, once we get the color correction that you want, uh, make sure that the first frame or whichever one you edit is selected. Press Control A and that will highlight every frame and then we're just gonna hit sync here. And make sure everything is selected. Usually the lens correction isn't check marked. If you do do that, make sure you select it and then any other effect that you've done. every All the basic stuff should be there, I just know the lens correction isn't there, uh, usually selected. So then once we do that, let's just hit synchronize. And then you can see up here in the left hand corner, it's going to paste them out. And then once those are all done, we're gonna bring it over to Premiere. 
if you are using Lightroom, um, once you export your photos, I do suggest that you exit out of Lightroom because I do find it throttles your computer a lot. Uh, maybe that's just my system, but I have found that Lightroom does tend to slow down my whole operating system when I have it open. So I like to close it down just to uh, use the maximum GPU and CPU that I can for my computer within Premiere and not dispersing it across the Adobe programs. Okay, once we have exported our photos and we're gonna open up Premiere, let's go over to Edit and go Preferences and Timeline. And then from there, the still image default duration, let's just make that one. You can do one or two um, and just see how they are, but this will be good for importing them. It will keep them at a frame, but then we are going to nest and um, change the time up a little bit anyway so it's not too big of a deal but this will help to get a more accurate time time lapse um, duration so let's just go file import and then find your photos so I have my edit here and I'm just gonna hit control a and import them all So let's just select this all. Make sure you deselect the sequence and drag them into a timeline. So we can see here that we have 211 photos. So let's make sure first our sequence setting. Um, generally 24 is probably your best bet. So let's change that so if we have 211 and we divide that by 24 frames that gives us 8 seconds and 78.79 so basically a little over 9 seconds so I'm gonna select them all just by clicking and dragging to highlight and then right click and go nest and then from there I'm gonna right click and go to speed and it's seven seconds right now um, let's actually just play that back and see what it looks like okay so it's super glitchy because this is such a large file okay so I can't really play back so what we're gonna do is our last step anyway we're gonna open up a 1080p 24 frames and then we are going to copy and paste that in the reason why I like to do that is because um, I like to have the original 6,000 by 4,000 just in case I ever need it but because I am generally working in 1080 um, I will the last step will be going into a 1080p um, size and then just scaling down for whatever I need but I like to have that original file just in case so usually if it's 6,000 by 4,000 scaling it down to 35 will work and my playback is still super slow because it is such a large file but I do know that it works so we can just try rendering this out and then from there we can just export. All right, now that it's rendered out, we can see that it's working good. So I'm actually quite happy with that there. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this first picture because it is actually not part of it. These first two frames, three, Okay, so there, so I wanna actually get rid of these ones. That was part of the first time lapse that I started and then stopped it to reposition and refocus. So that's looking pretty good. I think we are ready to render. So let's just cut that end out that we cut out and let's go file, export media. Uh, I'm gonna make it an H.264, 1920 by 1080. 24 seconds uh, if you want render at maximum depth 
I usually like to turn these up to try and get like a decent amount of quality. And then last would be your bit right here. So this is basically telling the file how big it can be and what to limit it at. So just this will be your max. So that's the total max it can do. And then we're setting at 85. That will obviously raise up this, this file of your uh, render, but to whatever you want. And then you can just hit export and that's everything. That's how to make a time lapse.